What's up? Give me a second. I'm old and slow. I gotta get my stuff together. One more second. All right, I'm ready. What's up, my champ? How you doing? Oh, is it out here? Oh, sorry. How are we doing? Good. Hey, I want to answer a question. Um, Grace and I, we live in his mom's house. That's the true answer. Um, we're lucky to be there. Grace and I can't wait to share all these embarrassing stories about you today. I'm just kidding. Just kidding, maybe I'm not, but he's red now. All right, I need to ask, uh, it's right to read week. You guys are reading books and I heard we're in chapters. What chapter are we in? What number? 32, do I hear 32? I got 33, 33, how about 34? 34, anybody reading in 34? 34 over there, how about 35? 35 anywhere in 35, look there, Miss Mac. I thought it was like 34 and 35, right? So if you said 32, you're two chapters behind. Catch up, all right, catch up. 34, 35, that's where we're at, right? Catch up, I'm not talking about hot dogs, catch up, okay. Catch up, 34, 35, we're gonna talk about that today, but 33, Larry Bird's number, it was pretty good, pretty good chapter, right? Talked about something about boundaries, right? So the two characters hop over the fence, start running through the grass, and they recognize they've gotten off the path, right? There's a reason that there's guardrails along the sides of the roads, because not all cars are meant to drive off-road, right? So they try to keep them in there, make them bounce around like pinball, and keep you on the right path. So our two characters go off the path, don't they? And they're captured by a what? Giant, very good. What was the name of that giant man with no knees? Yes. Despair or bear? What'd you say? Despair. The giant's name was Despair, right? Very good, very good. The giant's name was Despair. And so they capture our two characters, Christian and Hopeful, and they take them to what? A, this must be like a really smart class. Makes sense, because Noah's in there. He's really smart. They take him to a what? Yeah, you. Remember, I'm old. You gotta talk loud. A castle, right? What did they call that castle? The name of that castle, friend of that girl, yeah. Oh, it became a dungeon. Is there a dungeon in the castle? Okay, what's the name of the castle? You're kind of doubting the answer. Are you sure about that? No. Well, you're right. It's doubt. The castle of doubt, right? Castle of doubt. I want to talk to you a little bit about doubt today. Sometimes we doubt things. What are some things that we doubt? What are some things, Eli? That's an awesome example. Has anyone ever tried out for something? Raise your hand. Have you ever doubted whether you're gonna make it or not? Okay, cool, Eli, great job. Everybody can relate with that, very cool. What are some other things we doubt? That's a cool mask, yeah. Ah, uh, yes. History. So you're saying Miss Miller poses a question to you, you raise your hand, you give the answer, or you think you know what it is, but then you start to doubt. Oh, is that the right answer? Am I talking about the right history? 
There's a lot of history. We get more history every day. Is this the right answer? Am I in the right class? A lot of doubts happen, yeah? I bet you're pretty smart. I bet you do all right. Or is Miss Miller just giving us a trick question to get me stumped and embarrass me in front of the whole class? Who's thought that before? Yes! Those are my kind of teachers. Sweet. We have doubts, right? We're allowed to doubt things, don't we? We're allowed to doubt. But let me tell you something. A doubt castle. Does that sound like a place you want to live? No. And so this isn't a Holiday Inn. This isn't Kalahari Water Park for our two characters, is it? No, this isn't a fun place. In fact, they find themselves locked up, correct? Because let me tell you something. When you live in doubt, you start to make a bigger issue of the things around you, don't you? You start to question things. I think that's why the author of this story decided to have them be captured by a giant. Because the giant shows some imagery of something larger than themselves. When you live in a place of doubt, you start to make things a bigger issue than they really are. Because yes, you've raised your hand to give an answer to a question in class, but it's not like it's worth a test grade, right? So it's really not that big of a deal if you get it wrong. Miss Miller doesn't kick you out of class and say, wrong history, ha ha ha, depart from the room. That doesn't happen. It'd be sweet if it did though. You got like exiled out of class. Think about what you just did in the hallway. But oftentimes, you feel trapped, not by the situations or the things around you, but by what you're thinking. You're often trapped, concealed by your own thoughts because you're allowing yourself to think about it more and more, and it grows bigger and bigger, and the despair makes you feel like you're confined and you can't break free. And one of the names of this character is Hopeful. And Hopeful Hope looks really small when living in the castle of doubt, surrounded by a lot of despair, right? You know, sometimes doubt comes when we don't understand things. Doubt shows up when we don't understand things. So I need to know who is really smart. Now listen, I understand people tell you you're smart and you get little reports. Congratulations. But I mean like, who is really, really smart? Savant, borderline, uh, fifth graders, it's not you. Miss Hoyt's taught us six is more than five. So it's got to be a sixth grader because they've gone through this longer. I think they're pointing at you, bud. Come on up. Come on up. Hello, smart kid. Tell everyone your name. Dylan. The questions will get harder, Dylan. But you got that one right. Is this Dylan? Yeah, they're doubting your own name, Dylan. Dylan, thanks for being here. Dude, that's awesome that your friends think you're smart. You probably had to work hard for that. You've shown hard. So way to go. That's awesome. So Dylan, let's imagine for a second all the information in the world, all the history, all the math, all the science, all the knowledge in the world, could be placed in this container right here. Hold that for me, Dylan. I didn't ask your strength, but it's not too heavy, is it? Okay, cool. Imagine for a second all the information, knowledge that you have that exists, the answers to everything you could fit inside this container. Okay? So if this is the almighty sized container, Dylan, Let's have a moment of honesty. 
which of these containers would you say could hold all the knowledge that you have? Would you say this is all the information, everything you know, everything you've studied, you've learned, you've memorized, would you say in relationship to the knowledge of the world and everything that exists, all answers ever, would you say you're like this box, maybe you're a medium, maybe you'd say, yeah, I could biggie size that. Where would you say you fall? Now listen, friends, all of you that pointed your fingers, I asked for the smartest, smartest kid, and you sent me the small box guy? You sent me the small, where's the medium sized box? Maybe one of your teachers, they're smart. Maybe your principal, they're pretty smart. Dylan, would you say your teachers would at least be one box up? No? Okay, great. Oh, Dylan, that might be the least smart thing you ever said. All right, Dylan, this is his box. It doesn't matter if it's face mask box, but it's the size of the box. So I'm going to put everything that Dylan knows, and clearly he has more to learn because of that last answer. Good luck on your test this week, Dylan. And put it in this box. Dylan, I'm going to carry this around. Would you say Dylan's knowledge filled up a lot of this box? <laughs> Not really. No offense to Dylan, but it ain't that much in there, is there? No. Okay, okay, Dylan. Here's why I'm telling you this. Now, Dylan, you were honest talking about the size, how much you know. That's cool. This shows us a couple things. First off, it shows me, hey, you got more to learn, right? But you know what else it tells me? If Dylan knows all of this, and this is, this is something, He's, he knows something, right? He is smart, I can tell he is smart. If Dylan knows all of this, but in relationship to everything that goes in this box, Dylan has more to learn. It also tells me there's some things in here Dylan doesn't understand. Maybe you don't know it yet, maybe you just haven't studied it yet. Someday when you're a doctor, and all of these kids work for you someday, or CEO, That'd be sweet. Revenge. No, but someday, you're, you may know more. You may know about this much, right? But really, that's not even enough, is it? Here's what I want to tell you. Give Dylan a hand. Great job, Dylan. Good luck. Dylan, here's a little information for you. If you have a multiple choice test, 27% of the time, the answer is C. All right, here's what I want to tell you. If you have a little bit of understanding, I think we all could say that there are things that we don't understand, correct? There are things that we don't know the answers to. There are times that we go through life and we are relying so much on what we do know but we are shown that there are a lot of things that we don't know, aren't there? And when there are a lot of things we don't know, sometimes we struggle to comprehend those things based off what we do know. I'm saying a lot of things I'll clear it up for you this way. Sometimes, if this is all you know, this is all you know, you start to doubt because of how big this other stuff is, but whether you really know this or not, whether this is really true or not. So you start to question things, correct? And so what does the character do to eventually get them out of the castle? Jaden, he uses a key to get out of the cage, right? But what does he do? Yeah. Mm -hmm. He prays. 
Did he know what prayer was before he went into the castle? Yeah, prayer is communicating with God, right? Prayer is communicating with God. He knew what prayer was. There's a story in the Bible, the book of Matthew, by in a guy named John the Baptist. He knows who Jesus is. He even baptized Jesus. Raise your hand if you've been baptized before. All right, sweet. The rest of you? All right, sweet. Very good, very good. Jesus is baptized by John the Baptist, right? But then John the Baptist goes to prison. He's locked up. It sounds a lot like your story. And while he's in prison, he starts to doubt that this Jesus that he knows that said he's going to save the world is actually going to do what he said he was going to do. Why? Because John the Baptist looks around and recognizes, hey, I'm in prison and things aren't happening the way I expected them to. Has that ever happened in your life? Things didn't happen the way you expected them to. You didn't get to spend your evening doing the things you wanted to do. You didn't get the things for your birthday the, or have a party the way you wanted to. You didn't get to go to school and do all the activities that you wanted to do. Things weren't happening the way you wanted them to. And so John starts to doubt Jesus. Are you really who you say you are? So he sends the people to Jesus and says, hey, Jesus, check it. I'm in prison, not a cool place to be. I'm about to lose my head, foreshadowing. And spoiler alert, he does. He loses his head. But he says, Jesus, things really aren't going the way I thought they were supposed to go. John's saying, this is what I understand about you. But I've got some questions because things are happening and I don't understand why they are. Let me tell you something, friends. You're gonna have moments where you start to doubt. You're gonna have moments where what you believe to be true, you start to question whether it's really true. You're gonna have moments where you as Christians lose hope and may feel like you are surrounded by despair. When that happens, be smart enough as Dylan because you know what Dylan was smart enough to do? Dylan was smart enough to pick the one box that had the Bible. Dylan, we knew you were smart, Dylan. Dylan picked the box that shows us where we can find the answers to our doubts. It's praying like Christian in the story. He's seeking the truth from God. He's calling out to God for help. John the Baptist in prison asked Jesus for answers. Let me tell you something. I don't care if you doubt that you're gonna to see tomorrow, doubt whether your parents are gonna to stay together, doubt whether you're gonna be able to finish school or take this test. You're going to face some serious doubts in life. When you have those doubts, turn to what you know to be true. Open up your little box. Spend some time in prayer. Read God's word. Because listen, here's my little ending for you. Jesus can handle your doubts. He can handle your questions. He's not going to kick you out of the classroom if you get raised a question. He's not going to say, oh, you don't believe in me anymore? I banish you. He won't do that. He reveals himself in truth and in love. So if you have doubts or things happen that are bigger than your understanding, even in fifth and sixth grade, take those to Jesus. And that's where freedom comes. After Christian and hopeful pray, they find a way out and they're free, correct? And they flee the castle, don't they? Let Jesus shine some light into your life through his truth that never changes despite your circumstances. Can I pray with you? Hands to the sky. The sky's up here. Clap them up high, bring them down to your chin.
Bow your head, let's begin. Heavenly Father, thank you for this iChat group, these fifth and sixth graders. Lord, I know they're smart. They've got smart teachers. They're smart students. And Lord, as we talk about today, some tough things, that there's going to be times that even though they're smart, they don't understand. They don't know why this is happening in their life. Why they have to go through this. Why they're expected to know something. Lord, I pray in those moments where they have doubts, where they feel despair or uncertainty, that they won't hold that in themselves but they will recognize that there are things that we don't understand or comprehend. But you being God know what's best for us, that you are the source of our answers and you desire to share those answers with us. So speak truth to us, guide and direct us and receive this worship as we close today, amen. Oh. 